Welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine, and I like to think that I can keep calm in a difficult situation based on my background working in a psych hospital. But when I had kids, I was constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing them up this time. Add in a child with a chronic illness and I found myself full of anxiety. Momxiety is a real thing for every new parent, and when you add in a chronic illness, food allergy, or other challenging circumstances, it can become downright isolating. And that's why the Momxiety Club is here for you. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood, so join me and let's get rid of this momxiety together. So I just opened my email just randomly, just force of habit check stuff and I saw that the results were back from Quest for both my boys and the email above that was from CHOP to schedule a appointment for my youngest and so I immediately am just like oh my gosh like why he wasn't supposed to have a follow-up were his results really bad all this other stuff. And of course I did not like register him as a dependent on quest and set that all up because I figured it was going to be like another week or so until we got our results back. And so now I called them and they're closed on the weekends because I can normally at least get the results like that. And no. So I added him and you have to wait a couple business days until they verify it. So I'm go to my husband and go, oh, I'm trying not to freak out, but here, look at this, and then look at that, and Ruben's results are way up high, so, like, what's that? We're just, and now we're going through this whole, like, how can I get the results? Like, um, just calm down, like, it's okay, like, after he's gone to the bathroom three times today, which is a lot, um, and lots have <laughs> come out. So I'm just like, okay, well, that's okay. It's okay. We even said at the doctor's appointment that even, you know, it's just a non-invasive way to track and measure and see how things are doing. And it's to use in conjunction with symptoms. So maybe it's just to like keep us on the radar and keep him on the radar. So if things go, and even at the file, even at the appointment, our doctor said, you know, he seems fine. Um, my husband and I said, we wouldn't want to do anything invasive, you know, jumpstart any type of thing that's not necessary since he is okay right now. And that it's like a good baseline to have. Um, and the doctor even said, there's, I wouldn't really do anything right now if things continue to go fine, but we'll just do the calprotectin to see and go from there. So I keep trying to take deep breaths and calm myself down and think of the 20 different scenarios that, you know, maybe it was just, it got flagged in the system and an email was sent because a result was back in, or maybe it, and it could be completely fine and normal and not elevated and, or it could be elevated and the doctor just wants to have him on a schedule so we can keep things, keep ahead of things and not get way behind and have to play catch up with if things suddenly aren't going great. So yeah, there's my mom of a kid with a chronic illness and like our normal test results and getting things back and interpreting and waiting. Um, and then I even said to my husband, he was shocked by Ruben's results cause they were really high. And, um, so for the test I'm talking about, a normal result is under 50. And the first time Ruben had this, his result was 838. And this test, other times they can go up thousands. And so his is in like the thousands, two thousands. And so my husband is like, well, he's doing fine. You know? And I said, no, I, I know too. The only thing I freaked out was 
last week, like a day after he had his infusion, he had a stomach ache at dinner, exactly where it always hurts, same symptoms, same, you know, progression. And my husband and I both like had that, what is going on? And like, oh, that's it. So about, you know, three infusions in after the six week span instead of four weeks. So here we go. But knock on wood, things are good. Just a little panic and that's it. So I'm just wanted to share that with you that, you know, things can be triggers. Things can, you know, opening your email can be set you off down this path. And I want to say that I've handled it a little bit better. I am not having the panic and tightness in my chest. I am calm and I'm able to more easily go through the alternate scenarios that are not worst case. Um, So just wanted to share that with you. And it's actually very interesting because I was listening to Choiceology, the podcast by Katie Milkman and what actually Ruben and I were listening to it and what it is, um, the one we listened to is, uh, about positive thoughts and negative thoughts. And this is like the upside of negative thoughts. And, um, it's amazing. I'll link to it in the, in the description, but talking about basically preparing for the worst and you can then be better off in the end when those things don't happen. So that's how I'm choosing to look at this, this experience right now that yes, my mind first goes to the worst, but it's because I have prepared myself that way that we are good to go with whatever outcome. And right now things are great. So I just wanted to share that with you and have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember, just take those deep breaths, reach out and get rid of the anxiety. You are not the only one with anxiety. You are not alone. And the more we normalize and talk about these feelings, the easier it gets. For more information about working with Tori or joining the Momsiety Club, head to join.momsietyclub.com. There you'll find information about Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor course, as well as the Momsiety Club, where you'll get access to two monthly support groups with other moms just like you, as well as exercises and a chat about the monthly theme to help manage your anxiety. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK.